SDG Jane Wambogo, the JEDA Youth and Nutrition Advisor, ABDP. Uh, I, I, we have uh, the importance of integrated homestead food production for aquaculture program. The importance of integrating food production in aquaculture is because we get fruits and vegetables available at household level. We have various technologies for vegetable production that are relevant and related in the different agroecological zone. We also have the vegetable production at ground level and we have also integrating fish production and small stock with vegetable. This is important for household to improve their nutrition and therefore we encourage all the homesteads, all the households to produce fruits and vegetables in their kitchen gardens so that they are available for household production. They are cheaper. The importance is they are cheaper, they are available, they are accessible, and they can produce, be produced economically by household, both the youth, the disabled, the mothers, the fathers, and therefore this is a very uh, an, uh, important and very encouraged at household level. So we are encouraging all households. Let's produce the fruits and vegetables that we consume for dietary diversity out of our meals. Let us produce in the, our gardens, whether you are in a balcony, whether you are in the rural area, or whether you are in an urban area, we have the technologies that can be used to produce the fruits and vegetables for homestead co production. Thank you. My name is Gladys Nahulo, Agriculture and Home Economics Extension Officer. I'm going to take you through corn garden technology. Corn garden technology is becoming very popular because it saves on space, it saves on uh, water, and it's also very beautiful in, a comp in, in the compound. Corn garden technology, you require strips of dam liner that have different uh, diameters. So you start from the big one to the small one. And you, once you erect the small, the biggest, it will be able to support the next level. So you go erecting up, up to the last one. And you make sure also you have uh, manure, you have uh, soil, because you must just start right from the beginning. If you don't start right, your crops will not do well. So you mix soil and manure on equal parts so that your garden can stay with the nutrients for the plants for a long time. Corn garden can be big or small. This particular one is the big one. And on this one, we have grown the exotic vegetables. This one can hold up to 80 plants of ex exotic vegetables with a spacing of one foot. And as you can see, we have grown several varieties. We have the cabbage, we have broccoli, we have cauliflower. And uh, we also have, uh, this is broccoli, this is cauliflower, sorry. We also have beetroot. We also have beetroots, which are almost ready. When you have uh, such a garden and you grow a variety of vegetables, you are sure of being able to diversify your diet through various vegetables. Because most of these brassicas have vitamin A, vitamin C, which are very good for general health of the body. Like the beetroots are very good for the heart. So we have two types, this is the big one, and we also have a small one. Today we are talking about a sunken moist bed garden. And for a sunken moist bed garden, we shall need several materials. One, we shall need a polythene, polythene paper, that is a thousand gauge. We shall need soil, and then we shall need manure. And soil and manure, our ratio is one to one. So when you want to construct a, a sunken moist bed garden, you will excavate the soil and at your width of 
one meter or 1.2 meters and excavate the soil deep at two feet down. Those are 60 centimeters down. Once you've done that, you will lay your paper in the excavated area with lengths that you decide that you can go depending on your space. Once you lay your paper down, make sure the paper it will overflow because you are, it will be big enough and then you farm it from the sides. You can use pegs or you can even put big stones to make sure the paper is being held in place. Once you've done that, then you put your soil mixture in inside that moist bed garden that you want to, to plant. What is the importance of a moist bed garden? The sunken moist bed garden. It is very good for retention of water and it it can be you it, it, it stands a lot of water and it can be done by anybody especially after the excavation the main maintenance of the 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 sunken moist bed garden can be done by any member of the family it can be done in areas where water is water is is very scarce because as the water flows in when the rains rains then if it's very little the water will flow in and it will settle on on that paper that you are you are having when you are doing a, a sunken moist bed garden, our most appropriate crop that we are targeting in most, care, in most cases is it is the carbohydrate crop, that is the starchy crop. So we usually target a lot of the, the arrow root. So that even as, as we are eating our vegetables, we also incorporate the starchy crops, which are very important for us. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Nzambuli, Agriculture and Home Economics Officer. We are going to talk about micro gardens or container gardens and here I have several containers that we can use for micro gardening. These are 20 liter jerry cans that are spoiled but we want to turn them into food production. I also have buckets that could be broken but we can turn them into a garden. So the 20 liter jerry can you will have to cut it into half like um, what I have here. You cut it into half to make two gardens. Just cut longitudinally, it will give you two gardens. For this, you also can cut it into half to make two gardens for you. And for the buckets, we make holes 20 centimeters apart. Even once we cut this, we're also supposed to make them into 20 centimeters uh, holes to accommodate our plants. Now, this garden is very important because you can do it even on a concrete slab. So long as you can support your main poles, you can do this on a concrete slab. We are using uh, buckets and basins that are spoiled. So that means we are handling environmental cons conservation because we would have thrown away or burned the buckets and that is not healthy for our environment because plastics does not deteriorate. So in each one of these containers, it can accommodate, the whole garden can accommodate between 20 to 25 buckets or basins or containers, whichever you're using. And in each one of these containers, you can raise up to 10 plants, a minimum of 10 plants. So if I have 20 micro gardens, and in each one of the gardens, I have a minimum of 20 plants. I'm saying minimum because some of them will hold more than 10. That means that I have 200 plants and then I don't have to grow one type of vegetable. I can have a variety of vegetables and also incorporate herbs and spices. I can have um, vegetables like spinach, like what I have here. I can have calicates, like what I have here, and local vegetables. All the green leafy vegetables are very important and rich in iron, rich in iron for blood uh, formation rich in calcium for the bones and phosphorus for the bones. They are also rich in vitamin A, which is an immune system booster and also helps in healing of wounds early. So that is the importance of these gardens. And I can have a variety. Actually, I can have one bucket or basin with a onion. I can have another one with spinach or skumawiki, another with local vegetables. And for the buckets, I can be able to plant a tomato in here and it will still give me fruit. So really, you can have your whole kitchen requirements from such a small garden. That is the importance of this garden. And it can also be placed anywhere, like on a concrete slab, supposed, uh, so long as we support the, the poles. So 
we encourage micro gardens because they occupy small space like this garden where i am i only need four meters an area of four meters and i'll be able to gather all these vegetables together for my use thank you this is a small corn garden it's very ideal in areas where you want to save on space or in areas where you want management to be easy and areas where you want uh, high populations. You can have several of them in a garden. It's also very ideal for the elderly because it's gender friendly and even those who are physically challenged. Besides that, it's a very beautiful garden. You can grow your vegetables. You can grow the exotic vegetables, the local vegetables or fruits like strawberries. Fruits that don't require a lot of uh, space or that are not very deep-rooted like the fruit trees that are big. This particular one we have planted, the kali kales, we have spinach, we have uh, kales or sukumawiki. The kales are very good in uh, vitamin A, which is good for the eyes and also good for the general body functions. Spinach have a lot of vitamin A. They also have calcium. And all the vegetables have a lot of roughage. So it's a good garden because it requires very little space and anybody can be able to put it up. We, you can grow a variety of vegetables because we also need to diversify our diets. Remember, different vegetables t taste differently and they also have different nutrients. So diversity in production is very key so that you are also able to have diversity in uh, diets. Today we are going to talk about the moist bed garden and for you to construct a moist bed garden there are several materials that you require to have. One, you require to have a polythene, pepper, a thousand gauge and then you require soil soil that is well, good soil, you require manure, and then you require stones, you require grass, and also you require small stones. That is we are constructing a raised moist bed garden. Once you have all the materials, you will measure the size of the garden that you want. The width for a moist bed garden is between 1 meter by 1.2 meters. That is the farthest you can go, so that it allows you to work from both sides of the garden without stepping in the garden. The length, you can put it according to the size of land that you have, so it can go as far as you wish it to go. So for a start of constructing the moist bed garden, you'll get the polythene, which is a thousand gauge, then you put it down and then you fold it into a tube. It's like a tube. You fold it both sides, this side, this side, with the support of some posts. You can have some posts to support it so that it forms a, a, a basin like container for you. Once it has formed that basin like container, you now put the bigger stones, this size or slightly bigger. Then you put the medium stones inside. And then you put the small stones on top. And for the, for the size, measurement of the stones, the amount of stones that, where they should reach, it should be around 15 to 20 centimeters from the ground. That is if the most button like this, you measure here, the stones will be around there. After the stones, you put grass. That is an organic material that is dry, that is grass, leaves, if you have leaves that are dry and can be used in a garden, you put them there and you make sure you, you farm them. You step on them until they are firm and the grass should be around 10 to 15 centimeters, depending on where, where the stones were. After that, you put your mixture of soil and manure, which is one is to one. That is a raised moist bed garden. What are the importance of a moist bed garden? It is very water efficient. Because of the polythene that is down, when you put water, it doesn't percolate to the ground. The water will always be there for the plants, even if you don't water often. 
it is low, it is very low in labor intensity and then it carries high population density so that it means you'll have more plants on your moist bed garden as opposed to if you are planted with them on the on the ground direct and also for the moist bed gardens weed control is very easy as you can see our garden it doesn't even have weeds and it has been there for for more than two months also for a moist bed garden it is very gender friendly anybody can manage a moist bed garden even if you are you've been told to do a little bit of exercise and you're not even feeling well this is a place to try your and doing some exercise for a moist bed garden and the, also with one that is very most important to us when it comes to nutrition it is that it can produce for you a variety of vegetables you can have three you can have four you can have five depending on the length of your moist bed garden and your population you can also incorporate herbs and spices which you also encourage people to incorporate for pest and disease control and also for uh, they have a lot of nutrients even for us as human beings so which crops can be grown on a moist bed garden you can grow any crop any vegetable on a moist bed garden whether exotic or local you can grow you can grow, grow even the root crops you can grow even the headed crops like the cabbages and you can grow the local and exotic vegetables whichever crop you want to grow the most or vegetable that you want to grow on the rest moist bed garden it is possible okay here i have a star garden star because of the shape of the timber that we have used so it really also just brings out the beauty in agriculture and now we are also doing container gardening in that star garden again we use waste materials what we would call waste materials like broken buckets broken basins or broken jerry cans you can turn them for vegetable production in the star garden you can have a variety of the vegetables depending on your tastes and preference and depending on what you use in the kitchen because we want to minimize the amount of money that we use in the kitchen so the star garden you can put it anywhere in a space available either on concrete areas where maybe the population is high even in our estates you can have a star garden so long as you have an area that would measure four meters in diameter so you construct the star garden using waste material it really doesn't have to be new timber you can use waste materials put them into use once you do that then you come with your containers we do the soil manure mixture well rotten manure and soil one to one ratio fill up your bucket or basin or the cut container with that kind of mixture and then you cut holes 20 centimeters apart because that kind of mixture of soil is able to support that number of plants in here this is a big corn garden with the local vegetables the corn garden is ideal for areas that where you need to conserve water where you want to enhance high plant populations where you have rocky areas and you don't have you are not able to plant on the ground it's also ideal in space limiting areas like urban areas where we have uh, cash crop plantations where households don't have space for planting vegetables you just need your soil manure and then you can able to construct it's also easy to construct and you don't need specialized labor it is important because you can grow a variety of vegetables like this particular garden has more than five types of vegetables this one is good for the family because the family has different pre preferences of uh, eating and uh, sometimes you also want you to have diversity so you are able to consume a diversified number of vegetables just from one unit remember plant population is very high and since we did the garden with manure and soil the production is also very high like here now we have hello my name is Phyllis Zandambi and i'm an agriculture and home economics officer for today we shall be talking about the multi-story garden for you to establish a multi-story garden you will need something to contain the soil and there are various materials that you will use you can use a net 
a net is like this and it has already the spacing that have already been predetermined. You can also use a polythene that is for containing the soil. The quart has been used here. These are polythene. And then you can also use the normal sacks that we use for, for storing grains in our, our homes. So when you are using the polythene, which is a thousand, a thousand gauge, and the normal sack, you will have to now make the holes at 15 by 15 centimeters alternating. And then you will also need the soil. Soil, you need soil. Good soil. And then you need manure at the ratio of one to one. One manure, one soil, and then you need you need some small stones. It can be this type or any other type that it can't absorb water. And then you need a, a 4 kg tin. It can be plastic, it can be metal, but you open on both sides. So when you want to construct the multi-story ga garden, the 4 kg tin is the one you use at the center. You put it like this. You get the center for. So for the tube, for the sack, or for the net, then you put the, you put the 4 kg tin, then you put the marrow inside, it will create for us the channel for watering. So immediately you put the marrow inside, and then you'll be moving it up until it creates for you a channel for watering, where you'll be pouring the water from. So, what is the importance of a multi-story garden? A multi-story garden, it is very low labor intensive, it is also very high population density and it's also good for improving vegetable diversity because on this mulch store you can have three varieties or four depending on the on your family you can plant one variety half of the the containing material and then the other half you plant a variety and then around the mulch story you can plant another variety and then on top of the mulch story you can plant Spices and herbs, which are also very good when it comes to, me, to your health, they are good in, in the body and they also can be used to improve the other things that are required in, in the body. So, and the other thing, it is very gender friendly because anybody can work on this multi-story. Whether you are aged, you are young, you are also the, the children, even in the 4K clubs, they can use a multi-story garden to practice agriculture production. It is also very good in weed control. Once established, you don't require a lot of, a lot of management of the weeds because the, the crops cover helps in weed control. And then in the mulch story garden, you will get that it's also water efficient. Because once you pour the water, it is used specifically for the crops. Even as it goes down, it is not going to waste. It is going to another crop, to another crop, until it gets round to all the crops that you are, you are producing. Where can my story garden be constructed? A my story garden can be constructed anywhere in Kenya. Where there's, in Kenya or anywhere where you have some space. It can be in urban, it can also be in the rural. And in urban, it can also be constructed even if you don't have the physical space. It can be on the rooftops and it can be an, an, even on spaces of where you, you put your structures for poultry, you can put your structures for dairy. It will give you a my story garden it is very good for also for large-scale farmers who most of their land it is having the cash crops so the mulch story garden can easily be placed just around the home or around the kitchen or even in the corners of the compound and the, the family will have some vegetables to be used rocky areas your verandas are very good for mulch story garden and then what what can you plant on our mulch story garden mulch story garden can be planted a variety of crops from leafy green leafy crop with the vegetables you can plant fruits you can plant spices and then you can plant also herbs so you can plant root crops if you really want root crops on the mulch story garden they can pl be planted on the top of the mulch story garden and then they can also be planted around the mulch story garden and the other vegetables which are not root crops or the vegetables that don't form heads they are now planted on the sides of the mulch story garden and it's good to incorporate the herbs and spices dania even ho ho pili pili and at least a tomato around so that you have variety to choose from and then they also help in pest and disease control this is an integrated garden integrated because you have various enterprises i have vegetables 
here you can choose to keep either chicken or rabbits like my garden has chicken and then below we have fish this garden is important because number one it is diversified production of food vegetables uh, animals for protein and then fish integrated in the sense that the water that is used for fish production when we change the water we are able to irrigate our crop with the water so the water does not go to you to waste secondly the water has nutrients so the plants will receive nutrients from the otherwise waste water from the fish production the droppings from the chicken or rabbit are used as feed for their fish so the vegetables can be used for household consumption or we can also supplement livestock feed with the vegetables and then the livestock waste is used as a supplement feed for the fish so one system feeds into another that's why we call it integrated they enjoy a symbiotic relationship the three in setting up this garden you really don't have to buy new timber from the hardware you can use old materials to put up the garden the structure is two meter by two meters so you need a space of like four meters once that is done, you can use your waste materials to put up the poultry place, housing, and then you need the poles to support the housing. And up here, I have my vegetable garden. The vegetable garden, what I will need is well-rotten manure, like the one I have here. Make sure it's well-rotten. And soil. Topsoil is advisable for the garden. We use a one-to-one -one ratio in the garden because this is timber we will need to line our garden once you come up with a structure we line our garden using paper preferably the 1000 gauge because it is durable and it will not allow water to go through so line the whole structure that you have come up with with the paper put your soil and manure mixture in there basically ensure that you have six inches of that mixture and then you grow your vegetables here so the integration is important because it will ensure that the family has good nutrition and a variety of it the vegetables will provide minerals and nutrients the animals will provide the required protein and the fish will also provide the required protein. So really what I'll be looking for here in my kitchen is the carbohydrates, which can easily be gotten from maybe other parts of the farm, or you can even buy, because this really reduces your kitchen uh, budget. This is a simple bottle drip technology. It is very ideal in areas where you want to save on space. Ideal in areas where you have a uh, water conservation issue. It is simple to construct because it doesn't require skilled labor. And even the materials are locally available. It's also good where you want to achieve plant population, high plant population, because in a small area you can produce a lot of vegetables. It is good even in areas where you have... Uh, Easy labor like uh, people are around who would like to help. And it's an interesting garden because even children are able to help in watering. It is a, it's a hands-off garden because all you need to do is just open, do your work, and uh, your garden will be watered. It requires very little space because it can be erected along the wall or just any hedge and it doesn't have to be dug in the soil it can also be just a standalone unit in any area even where you have concrete it is important because you can grow a variety of vegetables the plant population is high because like this particular one we have three types of vegetables we have spinach we have the black nightshade and we have the terere down here 
So depending on what the, the family consumes most, you are able to just construct it. It's easy con to construct because you need several five liter jerry cans which are cut in opposite directions like this particular one. If I was to have another layer here, this one would be there. So that this, this flap is, is on the same side with the mouth. The next one is on the opposite side. And it's a very easy garden to operate because once you have the water there, all you do is just open You just open your garden and the water drips through. As you can see, the water is dripping through. When the water drips, this container is filled. Once the soil here is soaked, it waters the next garden. The next one waters the lower one. And any excess on the last garden waters the ground. You can also have other containers on the ground where the garden is not erected in the soil. And all you need is just the 5 liter jerry can or container for the water. These jerry cans you erect along the wall or along the poles where you don't have a wall. And remember to start off with soil, equal amount of soil and manure because we must just have the right nutrition for our plants. This way you'll be able to have a variety of vegetables. And remember to harvest in good time so that your vegetables are able to grow and give you more vegetables every time. When you don't have your vegetables, they overgrow and you waste. Like this black nightshade is ready for harvesting. If you don't harvest, they'll form seed. Once they form seed, they'll stop giving you the leaves. So once they are high, you harvest so that the new shoots can also give you more vegetables for the future. So that is a simple... This is a weak garden. Week as in the week, the normal week like the one we see in a, a lantern stove, in a lantern lamp, whereby the water is taken to the plant through capillary reaction, like you can see this particular one, it's a week. The week garden is very ideal on, in areas where you want to save on space, areas where you have management issues, and you want your garden contained in one place, asal areas, urban areas, or just any area where you have limited water. It's, a, it's an easy garden to manage and anybody can put, depending on what you want to achieve. As you can see this particular one, it has a lot of vegetables just contained in one area. Even on concrete, you can put the stand. The garden can also be erected along the wall you'll still be able to achieve the objective. And it's also very easy to construct because you just need a five liter jerry can or any containers where you just cut the water. Another one will be above the container. This particular container above the plant, the, the water will have a wick here. And then this one, the wick will sip water and take it to the soil. And then the soil, once it gets moist, it will be able to supply the plant. As you can see, every container has one plant because we want our plants to get enough water. So the week, like this particular one here, what you can be doing, you just check the lower part, like this dry one now, you fill it and you get your plants watered. It's also a hands-off garden, so it doesn't, it's not labor intensive. Uh, when it comes to management and anybody can be able to use it. Just remember to harvest your vegetables in good time so that you have a continuous supply. The garden can also have a variety of vegetables depending, depending on what the family prefers. This particular one has the curly kales, it has spinach and it has the lettuce both red and white. So we can have our salads, we can have our sukuma wiki, we can have our spinach. You can also just produce your local vegetables if you want, like the terere or the managu. This is a tire garden. Tire gardens ca can come in, in a variety of shapes or styles. They are very ideal in areas where you want to achieve high plant population. 
you want to control the environment menace like uh, littered tires you want to conserve water areas where you also want to control uh, the management because sometimes management of uh, kitchen gardens is very difficult but when you have your plant in one position like this management is very easy for many people they are also ideal in areas where you have limited space or you have limited land like in areas where we have uh, plantations and uh, very little land is left for the kitchen garden so such gardens can be very ideal all you need is a a tire when you look at this tire you cannot achieve high plant population so you have to cut the top when you cut the top you create more space for planting your crops and then because we want to conserve water you put a polythene at the bottom just like that the top that you cut from the tire you put it there so that it can secure you put something to support the soil remember the soil will be very heavy you can put a piece of timber or you can put a wire mesh and then put this top there so that your garden is firmly secured after that remember to mix your soil with manure or eco parts so that once you plant your crops they're able to get the right nutrients and you can have your crops growing for a very long time you can grow a variety of vegetables be it local or exotic depending on what the family consumes or what is on the market what can be sold at the market this particular garden we have the red lettuce and the green lettuce these vegetables are very rich in vitamin c very rich in calcium so calcium is good for the bones vitamin c is very good for boosting your immunity and even for the skin so you can grow any vegetables you want depending on what on what the family needs as a, a garden like this one you can also achieve varieties of vegetables if you look at it there are quite a number this particular garden is about 14 tires and we have a lot of plants you can also just have a garden of one tire maybe running along the driveway if you want to grow deep rooted vegetables like uh, carrots you can put two tires together like this so that you achieve the depth for the deep rooted vegetables and if you're doing that you now not need to put this paper there the paper will be at the lower tire this one can even grow sweet potatoes it can even grow arrow roots that's how you can use your tires to achieve your various gardens it just depends on how creative you are traditional the common kitchen garden where we establish a kitchen garden outdoor now whatever space somebody has even if it's 10 meters by 10 meters it is important that you subdivide that space into micro plots so that you can have various vegetables in that garden it's also important that you have a crop rotation schedule in your kitchen garden where you can have deep rooted crops alternating with shallow rooted crops and we must include a legume in our crop rotation program so like in my garden i have cowpea leaf as a legume for to that kitchen garden you can plant traditional vegetables or exotic vegetables in your kitchen garden depending on your tests and preference food tests and preferences in my garden i have clotoraria commonly known as murenda i have juice malo commonly known as uh, mito I have both broad-leaved and narrow-leaved amaranthas. I have um, I have sageti. All these are important, and I have um, kanzira or Ethiopian kale. All these vegetables, each one of them, they vary in the amount of nutrients and minerals that they have. 
But since all of them are dark leaf, green leafy vegetables, we are sure to get our calcium from these vegetables, which is important for bone and teeth development. We are sure that we will have calcium, uh, uh, magnesium in these plants. We are sure to get iron from these plants, which is important as a blood builder. And we also have vitamin A in the plants, which is also important in immune boosting and sight. You can choose to have either a purely local vegetable garden like what I have here, or you can even incorporate the cabbages, you can incorporate onions in your garden, you can incorporate spinach or skumawiki in your garden, you can also incorporate crops like broccoli and cauliflower which are highly nutritious so the basic is this have a variety of vegetables in the kitchen garden make sure you have a crop rotation schedule for the deep rooted and shallow rooted and have a variety of them because of the nutritional values now there's a vegetable here which is very slimy the juice mallow it's usually very slimy for those who cannot be able to manage that uh, taste it is important that you mix this vegetable with a bit hard leaved vegetables like i can mix my juice mallow with cowpea leaves you can mix your juice mallow with pumpkin leaves or you can mix your juice mallow with clotoraria that way the sliminess will be reduced and you'll be able to consume it for those who are unable to consume the sliminess it is very rich and high in iron for blood building thank you